The Monerotopia Price Report segment is sponsored by Local Monero. Avoid using KYC exchanges. Buy and sell Monero directly for fiat, peer to peer. Hey, hey. Morning, mate. How you guys doing? Good. 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 How are you? Good. Just partaking with the um, technical difficulties with you guys. <laughs> Although today I got all my shit worked out, um, I should be good to go. All right. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. It's, it's yeah. like, like a merry-go-round. It goes around. Like one of us has technical difficulties every week. It's, it's you... funny. I mean, the way you like, we try to fix something, it only makes it worse. And then after like much struggle and like head banging against the wall, you, you finally, it's probably like one little setting somewhere mm -hmm. that like just one little thing that you forgot about, like something is unplugged or maybe a cable's bad and you're like, God, it's just that one thing. And then yeah. it gets better. Like, at, like you just keep improving things, get better and better. Your automation gets better. But yeah, I mean, it feels like the more you work with technology, the more you realize that everything just barely fucking works. Yeah. <laughs> Operating systems, code, software, everything just like barely works. Mm -hmm. Very true. So, so um, yeah, I guess uh, we'll talk a little bit about price. Um, so the ETFs launched. We have some some history behind us now. Um, I thought some of the ways that they named these ETFs were were hilarious. So, for example, Valkyrie, they named their ETF Burr. <laughs> that's so that's their Bitcoin ETF. Um, kind of funny. They launched the ETFs, and um, basically, you know, price has fallen since the launch of all the ETFs. Um, let's go over some of these names. Um, okay. So there's like 10 of them. I, there might be more than 10, but, um, uh, so you've got the iShares Bitcoin trust. iShares is like one of the primary people that do ETFs for like commodities and stuff. Um, they're called iBit. Uh, the Van Eck Bitcoin trust is called HODL. Um, let's see. Yeah, we, we went over the Valkyrie Bitcoin fund. That's B-R-R-R. Burr. Yeah. You got to wonder, like <laughs> they had to have been like you know, these fucking finance bros after after work one day in the bar. There's like, what should we call this fund, man? I don't know. What about Burr? All the moon boys are always complaining about all the Burr the Burr money <laughs> that J Pal prints. Um, you've got Wisdom Tree Bitcoin, you've got uh Bitwise ETF, Arc twenty one shares Bitcoin. Um, and supposedly these things have been doing a shitload of volume. So um if I am to believe Twitter and I haven't gone and like uh really verified it for myself, but um apparently like more volume has been done on this Bitcoin ETF than like any other ETF in the history of ETF releases. So that's interesting, especially since the price has been down. Um, Grayscale is trying to get their price normalized. They've been sharing off chunks of Bitcoin trying to, um, you know, and that's actually like in hindsight, that's, um, that's an interesting dynamic because we could have looked at that and we could have said, hey, there's still a 10% gap of the Bitcoin trust or the, the GPTC Grayscale Bitcoin trust. And that's getting converted to an ETF. So they've got to, they have to normalize that price differential now. And the only way they can do that is by selling off Bitcoin, um, removing Bitcoin from that trust. So kind of in hindsight, you could have looked at that and said, yeah, that's going to be significant selling pressure right there. Maybe maybe that would, going forward, that could actually be a little bit of um, an instructive point for us. Once Grayscale normalizes their price um, to, like they normalize the their ETF value um, to the actual Bitcoin that they're holding, um, maybe that would be a moment for pivot, right? Cause right now things are kind of like slowly drifting down. Basically the charts don't look great. Um, but maybe once grayscale normalizes, that could be like a pivot point where we could, uh, see some resurgence. Just an idea. Um, I'll have to think about that some more later on, um, later on this week. So, um, <clears throat> the real, the real story here today, uh, is stocks, NASDAQ and S and P. So the NASDAQ has now made a nice big bounce well above its previous all time high, which was here. Um, the, the white and green lines are global liquidity. So the white line is, uh, sorry, the green is U S liquidity and then white is uh, global liquidity. So it includes the U S liquidity, but it also includes all of the M2 SL, all the M2 money from all the other different uh, banks out there and those banking balance sheets, plus everything that's going on with the macro money liquidity situation in the U S. Um, and so you'll see like, you know, that I, I, this is something I hadn't looked at. I don't know why I just stopped looking at the global liquidity for some reason, but yeah, in the beginning of December, we just had a big bump. Um, things just jumped to the top side, which kind of makes sense because, you know, stocks, stocks bumped. I think that these things tend to play off of each other. So stocks pump, your the companies out there, the financial bros, they're more, they have a higher valuation. Suddenly they can justify more, um, 
uh, more borrowing, more lending. And again, borrowing and lending is the way in which new money uh, comes into being. That's that's the, the stork or j bringing more money to the world. Um, so then like, okay, then, then global liquidity pumps and then you get the stock market pumps again. So um, yeah, I mean, right now, the stock market is, is the place to be. Uh, even if we take a look at the um, the relative prices, so is this Bitcoin? This is Bitcoin. Uh, so this is Bitcoin relative to the Nasdaq, and um, yeah, I mean you'll notice like in terms of the pub lines that that was kind of like a reasonable spot to expect um, to expect a little bit of topping action there. At some point in a, in a real bull market, this thing's going to break um, break to the upside here. These are like kind of very long term standard deviation lines, so I would expect that things need to spend so. If things were going to break, I'm not saying it's going to go up right here. It, it could very well just come to the downside and then go to the upside. But at any rate, these standard deviation lines are going to be pretty strong, and there's going to need to be some some time spent here churning before it really, before Bitcoin really starts outperforming the Nasdaq. Um, so I wouldn't I wouldn't expect Bitcoin to be making significant massive gains um, that outperform Nasdaq for a period of time. Um, I guess we could look at the range here, thirty percent up. 30% down, right? So we're looking at 20 to 30% oscillation to the up and down side. But I wouldn't expect Bitcoin to like 2x outperform the Nasdaq here until until like a real big macro bull market starts again. Um, and, you know, I mean, people probably would want to quibble and say, well, we are starting a big new macro bull market. And okay, maybe we are. Probably we are. Almost certainly we are. Um, but, you know, that doesn't mean that price has to go up now, right? Um, we don't, that doesn't mean we'll get the hockey stick exponential move just quite yet. I mean, yes, we've had some exponential moves, but we're not looking at like, it's not, you know, it's not um, August of, of 2020 or anything like that, or or December of 2020, right? We haven't, we haven't seen those kind of movements just quite yet. Um, let's see, this is, uh, this would be the total market cap uh, relative to the NASDAQ. So again, th don't worry about this Bitcoin thing up here. That that doesn't actually count what's, um, what's actually being shown here. In fact, what I could do is. Oh, why does this? They moved the they moved the mute button, or they moved. You know, actually, we're not going to screw with that. That's too much. Anyways, this right here is a script that I wrote. That's like the total combined market cap of everything, and that's the that's the candles that we're looking at. Um, anyway, so this is total market cap relative to um, to the Nasdaq, and it is also doing pretty well um, along those same lines. Like th this thing could have more, um, a little bit more. Like this chart looks slightly more optimistic to me in the short term than. Um, than the the Bitcoin versus Nasdaq chart, so um, and on that theme, let's go take a look at the dominance Bitcoin dominance. So uh, Bitcoin dominance here, right? We we had that wedge kind of broke down, um, and then uh, right now, like there's just seems like it seems like it's holding out pretty good here. The Bitcoin dominance, um, probably the ETF is keeping it, you know, at the forefront in a lot of ways. Um, I think that's all on purpose, right? Like we don't have to hash that out again, but I mean. Keeping the coin that you can't actually use very well and that every time people try to use just clogs up, keeping that at the forefront of the picture um, really, really keeps people away from from the idea of, of actually using it as money. Um, that's the power. That's the thing that has to be taken back. We don't need another store of value um, that goes on to reserve balance sheets and that's held for long periods of time by big companies, but no one actually uses Like, that doesn't give us freedom. Like, uh, just because you can audit it... <laughs> that doesn't do shit like it doesn't matter like that, that's oh we can audit it now okay whatever like you really think that the united states doesn't have eight tons of gold like i don't think they're i doubt that they're like seriously lying about that they might be lying about where it's stored it's probably not in fort knox but okay whatever yet i digress so bitcoin dominance here um yeah i mean fell out of the wedge seems to be hanging on this thing could go up it could go down it doesn't matter i tend to think that down would be the direction here slowly meandering down as altcoins um, start to play a little bit of catch up. At some point, I feel like there's got to be a breaking story for for the Ethereum ETF. You know, like all oh, these companies filed for the Ethereum ETF, um, and now the battle will begin again, right? There, we'll get Ethereum onto the onto um, into the macro. Uh, I don't know into the the traditional finance world. If that happens, like the moment that you see the the Ethereum ETF like hitting the news headlines, that's where you can start to expect that um, all coins could could begin there. Uh, a period of time where they outperform Bitcoin. So, I mean, this thing will go back and forth, right? Like at some point, if, you know, to convince the plebs that a new big um, macro move is back on, you know, a new all-time high, they'll have to push Bitcoin first um, to, to sort of convince everyone and then and then altcoins will follow. And you always, you have to remember like the fundamental factor behind that 
is that the thing they're going to make the most money off of is selling shit coins and degeneracy gambling to the plebs. Like Las Vegas is a massive city and I built, um, you know, my personal investment has built a lot of those casinos or some parts of those casinos, I'm sure. Um, and it's the same way with uh, with cryptocurrency. Like it's not Bitcoin that's the primary money maker um, for um, you know for these for these insiders for the the crypto cabal and now also the the financial pros. It's the altcoins. It's the shit coins. The things that they printed from nothing for free. Um, the degeneracy that goes around. They like they make so much money on that. So um, like they have to keep Bitcoin doing good and they use it to sort of supplement the the altcoin game. So um, yeah. Anyways, that's I. In my opinion, that's like kind of a fundamental backdrop of why altcoins basically always outperform um, in these big, big macro movements. So um, let's take a quick look at the rest of the macro. So um, we had talked about the dollar index uh, kind of showing some strength here, like it had bounced off that lower standard deviation, and um, you know that now maybe uh, maybe we could see a little bit of move to the upside. Overall, dollar is basically looking stable. Um, we'll be looking for the dollar to set up on a macro move to the upside or the downside at some point. And again, um, right now, this is just consolidate, consolidating volatility. Um, we'll probably expect this to just sort of consolidate for a period of time, make some kind of setup, and then whichever direction that it's going to go, we'll probably take the opposite end of that, right? So if dollar's looking like it's about to break down, like it's gonna wanna come visit this, these lower, very long-term standard deviations, okay, that'll probably signal to us that um, it'll be one of many signals we're looking for that um, you know a big, another all-time high in crypto is coming. Um, summer is coming in that regard. Uh, though gold, gold just, you know, kind of chilling here. Same thing. We like, again, we, we don't really, I mean, this thing, like sometimes it just makes these violent moves like it did, um, at the end of last year and in, in October where it just went down and then back up. Um, right now. Yeah. I mean, it's just kind of sitting here doing nothing. And there's a, there's probably like a part of the reason for gold to just sort of sit here and not do much is because they've already now pushed the NASDAQ to new all time highs. And now the excitement, like the the focus and the vision is going to be on NASDAQ and, and stocks um, and then some, to some extent cryptocurrencies. And so that that really does convince people out of gold. Like, why are you going to hold gold, which is just sitting here doing this shit when you can be in the NASDAQ, which is putting on new all time highs? So um, that's always like a prominent thing that's, um, that happens. It's a sociological thing. So um, I would just expect that to continue. I, at this moment, I wouldn't expect gold to break out. Um, at some point, you know, it's it's going to, but I just wouldn't expect that on the short term uh, necessarily. So, uh, okay, uh, let's take a look at bonds, bonds, bonds. Not much here to be excited about. The long end of the curve is uh, bumping up just a little bit. You'll notice that um, things are getting meandering on back towards that zero point. Um, so I was looking at this and I was wondering, okay, well, what happens if if the the long end of the curve, like, okay, let's suppose that the long end of the curve comes to the top side. Um, up here, and then we get an overall uh, non-inverted yield curve, right? Like if that happens, um, has that happened before? And the answer is yes in 2008. Um, in 2008, that actually kind of happened back here. I'm not entirely sure necessarily with the signals because I just sort of noticed this, but you'll notice that the long end of the curve came in like outperformed. I shouldn't say outperformed because actually this means bonds are going down, but the long the, the interest rates on the long-term bonds came back to normalize right here um, to be above the short term, which is in yellow. And that's like that's what should that's what should happen. Interestingly enough, what you'll notice here is that on the NASDAQ, um, as that was happening, like the NASDAQ was kind of topping. What's also interesting is that it even technically made a slightly higher high um just a few months later, even as bonds were crashing. So um, yeah, I mean, these are all patterns. Like, we'll kind of be looking at this. Uh, it's it's like it's it's so slow moving. It's just hard to, you know, it's 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 like hard to watch because you're like, God, is, did anything change? It's been a month. It's been two months. Nothing has changed. Um, but that's how shit surprises you. Like, it'll be steady state. Nothing will happen. Something will like flash a warning signal at you, and in a few days or a week, and if you're not paying attention, um, you'll miss an opportunity. So, um, unfortunately, that's often just how opportunity is. It's just mostly sitting and waiting until something very clear emerges from the chaos. And then you're like, nope, that's that's a signal. Let's let's take a move here. Um, and depending on like how you manage your stack and what you want to do, like that's a that's a strategy that some traders will use, right? You'll just be bored the entire time, and you'll only take trades every now and then when you feel like you have really high confidence. Otherwise, you're like, you'll be like, nope, I'm fine. I'll watch these opportunities pass me by. Um, it's not a big deal. I want to make sure that I'm winning. Um, I want to make sure that I don't take losses, right? The the Warren Buffett strategy of uh, of um, not, rule number one: don't lose money. 
So um, yeah, anyways, uh, we're kind of looking at this, uh, looking towards, looking from the past to see what might happen here. I don't know. Uh, that would be interesting if the yield curve normalizes right here. Um, and then if it normalizes and then nothing bad happens with the stock market and it stays normalized for months and months and months, we'll just say, all right, they probably like, I don't know, they they did something right to, to cover it. There's not a problem. Um, but at least for the time being that we have the reverse repos, um, which still have half a trillion dollars, we're going to probably say that nothing bad's going to happen as long as they've got reverse repos to rely on. So for the moment, we're not going to be looking for any major crashes in the near in the near future. Um, once these rever reverse repos start to get towards that zero point, um, we might start um, uh, getting a little suspicious or anxious or, or um, you know, opening up the possibility in our minds that that something new could be emerging. Um, Monero, I'm sorry that we never talked about Monero that much. What's there to talk about, guys? Only the technicals, the fundamentals, the usage, all of the good people and the awesome things happening in the ecosystem. But price, you know, like there's just not much to talk about in price, right? Still, th this is still falling volatility. Um, it's, I mean, we are like smack dab in the middle of these, um, <laughs> of, the, uh, of the moving average bands, the white bands here. Uh, the ones down here at the bottom, I don't know if y'all can see that. Um, the ones at the bottom are like the very, very, very longest term um, moving averages. But uh, the short term moving averages are in white right here. And we're basically smack dab right at the moving averages. So, um, yeah, there's not much to talk about here. If crypto goes up, Monero probably will sort of go up. Uh, if crypto goes down, probably Monero will sort of go down, um, but mostly stay stable. So um, we had uh, in terms of like Bitcoin um, versus Monero. We sort of like we talked about last week. We sort of hit this this point right here, just above like the very very long term lower standard deviation. Things bounced up. Um, on the, on the longer term, I, I don't really I really I don't like this chart at all. Like from a wave magic standpoint, this is fucking horrible. Um, these bands are already curving down. Like the standard deviations are curving down. Classically, what will happen is this will get to the standard deviation area here, and then just find another reason to go to the downside. So um, that's what the technicals would say on on this chart. Um, Sorry to, you know, sorry to, to bear bad news there, um, but that's just what the chart says. So i got to tell you guys what the chart actually says. Um, things look somewhat similar for Monero versus Ethereum. Um, it's not quite as bad because the these bands have only just barely started to curl under. And, and hypothetically, technically, if Monero jumped up here and like established it, like established above those bands, that would actually be a very good sign in terms of the ratio relative to Ethereum. Um, but man, that's, you know, that, that's a lot of ifs right there. I mean, maybe it's not a lot of ifs, but the one if, uh, <laughs> jumping above that, above that band, like that is definitely a big if, um, if we think that the crypto run here is not over, that we're going to get like a secondary peak kind of like we did in 2021. I mean, so far guys, this has looked exactly like the 2021 futures ETF releases. We had 15% on the day the ETF got released and then bleed out after that. Um, we're kind of in the bleed out phase or the, the consolidation phase, whatever you want to call it. Um, and right now things would, yeah, I mean, with the stock market going up, um, with liquidity being in like, there's global liquidity, there's, um, U S liquidity with that backdrop, you would say, yeah, it would make a lot of sense that we'll get another fucking, you know, degen pump on, uh, on Bitcoin and, and altcoins. So with degen pumps, uh, via leverage, right? Via via liquidity and leverage, they don't put that into Monero. They don't put it into gold. They put it into their degenerate shit coins. They move that leverage and they move that money into the places that's going to make them the most money. And they didn't get Monero for free, you know. So um, as we've talked about so many times, so uh, what it means is that if we think that's the macro backdrop and there's a, a reasonable likelihood of a secondary pump here on crypto markets, Monero's not gonna not gonna come here to the upside for Ethereum. Monero's not gonna reestablish itself in some you know big area here and then do that like. What's going to happen? Monero is going to maybe get up here and then falter and then come down as uh, as they pump the markets again, like at least in a relative fashion, right? Like Monero will be the side redheaded stepchild beneficiary of that liquidity, but it won't get anything like it won't get any directly um, from from the cabal. So, um, yeah, again, that's just like the realities we're dealing with. Sorry to be I hate to be so negative uh, at, regarding the the Monero's relative price, but. I just gotta tell it to you guys the way I'm the way I'm seeing things. So, um, I guess that's about it. There's there's really not much else to talk about here, uh, unless uh, any of you guys have questions. Let me check the YouTube comments. I always forget that. What do you What do you think of uh, the Zcash drama? So with Zcash, uh, yeah, ending the knee, and it looks like they're gonna re 
remain being listed on Binance. Uh, Monero, I don't think will will have a similar fate, right? I think Monero is going to be removed. What are your thoughts there? Yeah, it's it's funny how they're so willing to solve pwn. Like, oh, look how compliant we are. Look how easy it is to uh, to suck the regulator dick. Like, okay, it's guys, have fun it, with that. That the community is like behind it. I know, I know, some people aren't. And uh, which I'd expect, I just thought I would just think a lot more people in Zcash wouldn't want to go down that road. So that's a bad precedent. Is there really a Zcash community? Is that the fabled Zcash community? I guess they exist. You guys on Twitter, I don't know. I'm trying to figure it out. Every time I see positive Zcash comments, like they they feel fake, they feel forced. And when I look at their profiles, rarely, uh, I'm just kind of like, eh, is this real? Like, is this a bot? I mean, the people associated with Zcash, like they're, they're they use bots. Like they they have no moral hangups against um, astroturfing support for their coin. I thought it was funny that um, Barry Silbert, uh, one of the Monero Bros out there, I can't remember which one. Sorry, bro. Um, but uh, they uh, they were like Barry Silbert. Did you delete all your pro Zcash tweets? Where did they go? I saw that. Uh, wait, I'm trying to bring it. Oh man, now this is now this has changed to. Yeah, that that's great. Did, is that the case? Did he really delete all his? I mean, I didn't painstakingly go through all his tweets, and neither did I run a search, a Twitter search. I don't trust Twitter search, anyways. Like I've used it sometimes. You're like, yeah, this doesn't show. Sometimes it works. Usually, it works pretty good. And other times, you're like, eh, it's useless. It's a funny. All right. oh, go ahead. Yeah, I'm just I'm just looking at uh, Monero to uh, Zcash transaction count. And oh yeah, it's something we could pull up. Monero transaction count is stable, oscillating between twenty and twenty five k. See if you can compare it to uh, Zcash. Uh, is it Glassnode? I think it's Glassnode. Zcash, ZEC. Hmm. We should be able to see them both. What do you use for? Um... Oh, they do have Zcash here, of course. I forgot. Um, don't believe that hockey stick down there. That's that's probably just some artifact of the way they print the chart. Um, yeah, it looks like they're. Let's go to a longer time frame. Huh, three years. Yeah, so it looks like I thought Zcash transactions were lower than this. I mean, at a minimum, like their transactions are falling. So if they're down to three thousand transactions per day, that means that their um, their hidden transactions or their shielded transactions are far lower. I mean, this is pretty bad. Like they're down, they're down to the same levels that they were consistently at. Hell, they're even lower than they were back in 2018, 2019. Like, who uses Zcash? Like, who in their right mind? Like, they don't have any dark web support, so all the <laughs> All the druggies out there going to the dark webs, they're not hearing about Zcash. They're hearing about Monero. Like their suppliers are like, please use Monero. Um, the, you know, the websites, the the so the new Silk Roads out there, they're like, please use Monero. It's a better, you know, it's just better to use for this use case, particularly. Um, yeah, so it's hard to believe that their their shielded mounts are doing anything better. And plus you have to realize a lot of these transaction counts, um, I think these are were inflated partially by the that by that attacker. I don't know if he's still out there attacking, but it was like it didn't cost them much. It was just like ten bucks a day or something to flood the flood their network. All right. Yeah, I don't know if there's else has questions. Oh yeah, back to the YouTube. Darrow. People are asking, how about Darrow? <laughs> um I don't know. I mean, I don't want to get locked into an anti Darrow position. I just feel like releasing bulletproofs before the math audit was complete is not like that's bad juju. Like you're not supposed to do that. That that speaks directly to their to their competency or their, to their decision making. Um, I don't know. I mean, I've heard them kind of come back and say, well, you know, this and that. Like I, I remember Seth did kind of a long write up on it, and I don't remember everything about it. I just it's been too long. I haven't looked into it. I mean, I guess like bro, if if there's going to be degeneracy and there's money to be made, I can't fault you for it. All I can say is just um, you know, make sure that you've got a big strong stash of Monero that you use regularly. Um, personally, I, I would, I would much, much rather see, um, dark Fi and or Xano come into prominence. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, sorry, I don't have much more to say on that. I don't want to start talking out my ass. There's like other things too that Darrow did that were questionable, but they, 
I, I've also heard some counter positions that it's like, okay, like, so, so for example, okay, um, the, they had their, their code was not open source for the first year and there would have been no way to tell if they had printed extra coins. That is apparently not the case anymore. They, they did open their code. You can audit the chain in a similar fashion that you could audit Monero, um, to, to see that they didn't like secretly print any coins. Uh, for the first year that was like, wow, that's, you know, closed source software guys for a privacy coin. Well, wow, like it's just hard. No. Um, but they open that up, but there's still like other things as well. So, um, it has like a broader amount of support from the TDV guys, like from the, from the Berwick guys, the Anarchapoco, uh, from the Anarchapoco guys. So maybe, maybe there's something to be had there. Um, but yeah, that's, that's all I got to say about that. <laughs> yeah. I saw people like tweeting that they think the same people that started Monero started Darrow. Uh, no, I don't think, I don't think so guys. I'm not seeing any evidence of that. Yeah. Like you could, it's easy to say that, but like, what, what, why would you think that? It's it's a nice rumor to start, but there's like, yeah, no evidence of it. And, and why? So I don't know. Nothing against Darrow. Like, right. Yeah. We're not, we're not here to ra- wage war against them, but just, just be, you know, realistic about it guys. I mean, Darrow does not look like it's participating in any of the, um, I mean, it's down, like it's from, from the top in 2021, it fell all the way through October last year. And now it's almost basically at that same point. It's still almost, it's 90% down from the top. Like this, in a, in a world where we had the kind of leverage and the kind of liquidity and pumps that we've had over the past year, in the past 12 months. You would not expect a coin like Darrow to still be at its local lows or very, very close to its local lows from the top. It should it should at least be hanging out somewhere around here or somewhere around here. like. But it's not. So you have to ask yourself, why is it not? Is there some kind of central holder that's continually selling coins onto the market, trying to maximize their value? Right. Each pump, you get some mega pump and then it slowly bleeds out. You get some mega pump and then it slowly bleeds out. Maybe that's not a mega pump. Let's take a look. That's one thirty, hundred thirty percent over two x. Um, this is the same kind of shit you see on charts like like Ripple. When you have large centralized supply holders and you get these occasional, you know, green dildos to the upside, and then you take the stairs down, and everyone thinks, oh, at every single point you've got new liquidity entrance into this market, saying, oh, look how much it's fallen. It pumped. It's setting up here. It's consolidating, getting ready to pump to the nope. It you know gets crushed again. That's like such a common tactic that that's used by like it's it's the same chart over and over again when you have central holders, um, even Zcash. Oh, let's look at Zcash. Even Zcash has like similar dynamics that happen. Um, yeah, I mean you'll notice the Zcash is eh, that's not the full chart. I don't want to be, I don't want to be accused of doing what people do to Bitcoin uh, to Monero, uh, especially the Monero versus Bitcoin chart. Yeah, I mean look at the Zcash is it's at all time lows like. Why? Well, maybe it's that twenty percent founders reward that could have something to do with it. Uh, yeah, so it's it's the same thing. I I'll just be careful, you know. Like uh, maybe you can, maybe you'll hit, uh, you know, hit the double green, hit zero or zero zero on the roulette wheel. It happens sometimes. Like, but just know that it's 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 gambling, right? You're gambling getting into Darrow unless you have some kind of like insider information, um, or like you just have some further penetrating insight into the Darrow markets as they relate to crypto um, that the rest of the bros don't see and that I particularly have not been looking at and might not be able to see myself. Like if you have some really good insight, sure, go for Darrow. Like maybe you'll have an opportunity there, but like I just wouldn't, given its current dynamics, I don't see a reason to think that that should necessarily turn around. Um, And like just why? There's so many other coins that are performing. Like there's so many other coins that have hope and promise and hype and, and visibility and everything. Like if Monero is ignored because of its privacy features, like <laughs> what's Darrow going to be like? Are they are they going to add Darrow all of a sudden? Is everyone going to love Darrow? And if they are adding Darrow to the exchanges, like what does that what does that tell you? Like that might not be the best sign. In fact, that it that it actually performs for what it's supposed to do. So, I mean, for all these reasons, like it just I mean, I'm just like painting a picture here. The sort of like stream of consciousness at the moment. Like this is my thoughts on Darrow. Like if you ask me about it in the moment, um, I'm just not confident that I would uh, that, that I wouldn't bet money on it unless I had some special insight, which I don't. So, if you do, you know, good luck to you. Yeah, I mean, and price aside, I mean, is is it actively being worked on, or is it like one dev? I mean, I know that this guy's alleging that the Monero, the people that 
that created the crypto note white paper, which we, we know is not the case, like, or the early Monero devs created Dero, not the case. Um, but is there anybody even developing on Dero or is it just like one dude that's? Yeah, that's a good question. I, I, I really don't know what their development ecosystem looks like. Maybe I just someone don't, else could still get the, uh, you know, the exci- I mean, obviously I get it. It's people that hold Dero bags that are trying to pump it, but just, just, you know, for, for our community, people that are listening that are interested, just be really careful. I don't, I don't see anything that really, I don't know, makes it interesting. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to be proven wrong. Is there some kind of like vibrant development going on? Are there really smart people working on Darrow that are putting that, that are creating something interesting? Uh, I just, I just don't see that. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Someone here is asking thoughts on Memblewimble. Seems it just went quiet. Um, I think Memblewimble is relatively mature in, in terms of like the goal of what they wanted to achieve. Um, a few years, maybe it was two years ago now, I read a paper that, that said that um, it was broken, that it can basically be totally unwound. Um, just because one person came out and published a paper on ARXIV, um, ARXIV, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's broken, but I mean, there is someone out there that seems to know something about math and, <laughs> and cryptography that says that they think it's broken. Um, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Litecoin implemented it, and um, you know that was like their big claim to fame for a while, um, other than just being a a carbon copy of Bitcoin with a slightly different mining algorithm. Um, I I don't know, like, it, personally, I wouldn't want to see any technology developed with Mimblewimble because it's like, it might not be strong privacy. It might have problems and it might be able to be unwound. So you're going to get the worst of all worlds. You might not have good privacy and then you might end up getting de- delisted, right? You might end up um, be getting called a privacy coin if you're like, hey, look at our Mimblewimble. Uh, it's kind of funny in a way that Litecoin has not been delisted. It's not you know, being subject to those, to those problems. Um, but I mean, as, as we've seen again, the pattern here is like, we're going to delist all the privacy coins. These have privacy enhancing features. You've got to get rid of the coins. Oh, okay. We're going to delist them all. And then later, well, actually we, you know what? We kind of made a mistake. Um, looks like Zcash, like they have these transparent addresses that, you know, maybe we don't need to delist Zcash. Oh, you know, and Litecoin also like Mimblewimble is opt in. You don't have to use it. It's just like coins run on Bitcoin. We don't, we don't ban Bitcoin. Well, okay. Relist everything except for Monero. <laughs> Which they don't, they leave that last part out, right? That's the silent part. Um, I think Mimblewimble is mostly just marketing advertising. If you want strong privacy, use full membership proofs. Use like use a Zcash construction uh, or the ZK Snarks construction now, which does not require the trusted setup. Or if you do a trusted setup, take in like take in like a thousand points of, uh, of entropy over the course of a month or two, like they did when they launched Tornado Cash. Or use ring signatures. Use a strong, well-known technology that that works. Um, or and and make it default or just don't implement it at all like it just seems more like a marketing tactic to me so that's my yeah, that's yeah. I think about member women. for sure and you know network effect it's a it's a real thing right like you, you keep coming up with new fangled tech uh new ideas that do things in different ways that maybe quote unquote provide more privacy um but is anybody using it like where's the network effect that's that's a big part in this right so it's yeah. always so all right man fantastic as always uh, uh and we will keep moving on uh stay on board if you can i see neon is asking where's the guest link we post the guest link during the viewers on stage segment so we'll get there soon that usually happens at the end of the show well, i gotta bounce out i um i'm gonna head down to uh the greater reset here uh later today i'm already late <laughs> so just oh. waiting on them to fix my car who runs that that's Derek Bros. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Where's uh it's in Moralia, Mexico, which is like halfway in between um, say Mexico City and Puerto Vallarta, Central Mexico. Awesome. Beautiful area. It's just like a couple of days or how how long is that going on for? Uh it's been going like it's they started on Wednesday, I believe it was Wednesday, and they're going until Sunday uh, oh. or tomorrow. May- maybe Monday. Um and then we might go camping or something up in the mountains. So very cool, man. Very cool. It's awesome, man. Have a good time. Enjoy it. Thanks. Enjoy All right, guys. We'll talk to you next week. All right, man. All right, buddy. Bye. Have a good week. Bye.